I said, I'll tell you what. Let's say I'm 25 years old. I said, I'm 25 years old. I'm going to accept your system on be good and I go to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Now prove me this to heaven. I'm ready to get in, I'm ready to join the team. But I'm not getting on a losing team, knowing the team can lose. So give me, let me see some points on how this team wins. I want to see heaven. You know what I'm saying? Well, you have to wait to die to see heaven. All right, so the bones got to wait to die and find out there's no heaven. Do I, do I get a chance to get back? Back to age 25 and start all over again? No, so you asking me to take a chance on heaven and tell me it's against the law to gamble. <laughs> every Christian, every Muslim, and every Jew that's in monotheist, monotheism is gambling. They're gambling on the possible, is there heaven? They say, I know there's God, how? I felt it. Wow. I was watching a Reverend Christ last night for a quick second, had to laugh. Because he went to the book of Colossians, the first chapter, and he said that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. <laughs> he quoted, it's right in the Bible, you can look it up in first Colossians, somewhere in the first book of the chapter. He said, he is the image of the invisible God. Everybody said, there's a lot of Trump. And I think that I'm a bad person because while all of them were Appalling like they got the Holy Ghost, I found that to be quite funny. Because I was like, when I didn't say image, image, and invisible. So now, we have a problem with this, with this statement. If Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, then Jesus Christ was never visible. You hear me? That means he was never seen. There's no pictures. Take the crosses down. Take the plane of the rock pictures down. Or, the other side is, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. That is to say, that God became visible through Jesus. Got that? So then, see Jesus, you see God. You see the game? So that means that Jesus looked like God. So Jesus was not the son of God. Jesus was the image of God. He was made in the image and after the likeness of God. Jesus was, in fact, God by image. And that sounds good until I get to certain points like, I am not greater than he who sent me. I am my own accord, can do nothing. I come from the Father. I return to the Father. I am the way, the truth, the life to the Father. No one gets to him by me. Now that I become a first person singer and move into the second person for the description of God, how can I possibly be God and be pointing you in the direction of God? How did Jesus look like God, be in the image of the unseen God as a seen being, yet not be seen except through Jesus, and Jesus says, I'm not him. <laughs> Jesus said, pray me after this man, our Father who art in heaven. So if Jesus was on earth saying, pray to a God in heaven, then anywhere in the world he could be the God. You can't be God on earth saying, pray to the God here. Pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, holy is thy thy on and it is in give us you can't beg from yourself <laughs> but you already got it how do you ask yourself for something give me I mean you can go in the refrigerator and say I'm going to drink some of my orange juice especially if you have a house where everybody is fighting over whose orange juice but you can't give yourself your daily bread so when you read a section like that this was placed in the Bible purposely to trick the mind. And Reverend Price, he preached it as if it made sense. And a large congregation applauded as if it made sense. Why? Because they wanted to believe. Because they had faith. Because they were good Christians. And as good Christians, the first thing you must do is remove all of your inquiry senses. Remove anything that says, think for yourself. Get up, unscrew your head, leave it home, and then go to church. <laughs> Don't take your mind to church with you. Don't take your 
the, the ability to ask questions. To, uh, don't do that. And if you're a skeptic, by all means, don't go to church because they will have you demonized, call you a heathen, and tossed out the church because you can stick the reverend with some very simple questions like that. Now, how has Jesus become what? The image of the invisible God. How do you get an image and invisible in the same daggone verse? Unless you are trying to do something to my mind. Unless you're trying to trigger a certain amount of ignorance in my mind. Unless you're trying to get me immune to stupid statements. So as you start lumping or loading on other stupid statements, I'm, a, I'm now successful. I just go on and digest it because I'm used to stupid things. I'm used to hearing that the angel Gabriel came from heaven with a package. He had a package of Jesus. Now, and I'm saying that because there's more than there's only one way to see it. If the angel Gabriel came to Mary, said, Hail Mary, full of grace, thou have been chosen amongst the women in the world to conceive, right? And he wasn't the Holy Ghost. Correct? And if he was the Holy Ghost, then what part of him standing at Mary's door or standing in front of Mary, what part of him contained the Jesus factor? What part? I'm just going to the moment. Get me? Let's go to the moment where the Bible says, an angel Gabriel comes in front of Mary. Right there. When he's standing there, Mary's supposed to be afraid. Because she says, no man, let's touch me. They're having a dialogue. <laughs> yeah. She's saying, no, how can I conceive and no man has touched me? I had no sexual contact. Right. They're having a conversation. Uh -huh. Then she said, well, because you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> now. <laughs> what part of him <laughs> was the Holy Ghost at that point? <laughs> Is the question. What part of him was going to fill her? <laughs> that she would conceive of the Holy Ghost. Right. If you look at it the way it sounds and read what you read, it gets kind of funny there. That's right. Because there's only one or two ways that she either had a bag. <laughs> I'm sorry. They will either have a bag in their hand with Jesus in it. And the Spirit from God. And he came and said, Hear Mary. And I don't know what she went back and did with it. <laughs> I don't know how, how it but. The question is, you know, exact, exactly at what point uh -huh. did the angel Gabriel, the Holy Ghost, give Mary, I don't want to go that way. At what point did he give her this Holy Ghost? And how did he give it to her? They don't want to do that. They want to make the story sound pretty and depend on faith and belief. You see what I'm saying? That she was in a room and a light came in and said, Hail Mary, full of grace. Now I've been chosen one from the world to conceive of the Holy Ghost. That child which is in your womb is of the Holy Ghost. And Mary said, gotcha. And now she has this child in her womb. But Joseph comes home. And Joseph is a practical man. And Joseph asks, and Mary tells Joseph, you never... Yeah, yeah, right. You know what he is. <laughs> Guess who visited me today? <laughs> Joseph Sands says, well, you know, that's all about the little boo. The mother was over here. What did, what did you give up? <laughs> well, that, that bum ass brother, what did he borrow? <laughs> so, <laughs> Joseph was told by Mary, the Holy Ghost came to me, and now I'm pregnant. And Joseph, as a devout Israelite, Judean Christian, immediately believed it. Right? No, no. Joseph was of the descendants of Judah also. He was a, of a royal family. He was religious, as you want to have it. But when it came down to her being pregnant by the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden, Joseph's belief went out the window. He did not believe it. So what happened is, Mary 
I assume the angel Gabriel left his telephone number. <laughs> Mary called the angel Gabriel and said, yo, you don't have to explain it to Joseph. I tried. <laughs> and he inquired my story. So while Joseph was asleep, the same way we can always try to put things in our head when we have sleep. And yo, yeah, yeah, show sure up. Uh, the child, she, to get child on wound is from God. All right? And now, uh, Joseph had it accepted. <laughs> yeah, he caught it now. But he, remember, everything that happened to Mary is physical. But when you come to Joseph, he comes in the dream. dream. So you can't beat up a dream. <laughs> <laughs> you can't beat the dream up. You know what I mean? Why didn't Gabriel come to Joseph right. in bodily form? Right. Why didn't he appear to her? Why did he go? Why did he appear to him in physical? Why did he appear to Joseph in a dream, but appear to Mary in physical form? You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> you get the big picture? They, they use a little psychic kinesis <laughs> teleportation to get the message over, because there's no man going to want to hear, you got my wife pregnant by the Holy Ghost. He's standing there looking like a man like me. And don't say he ain't no man, because the book of Daniel said, I was in the field, and the man Gabriel walked up to me. So don't tell me no, don't tell me say, well, no, no, this, this child is holy. Because uh, this man here is an angel. His name is Gabriel. I mean, it would have been better if he appeared in physical form for no other reason than Joseph could have asked him to do something. Like, do some, do some miracles or something. Go and do, do some, something that other men don't do other than screw. You know, we got that chapter. Now, what else you do to give me... So get God on the phone. You talk to a man and find out what's, what's happening. But he wouldn't have got out the village on a tent. But I mean, but he got to do a dream now. So he can't put his hands on the man. You see what I'm saying? And then God plants a child in a woman. And they still got to wait nine months for birth. But this same God did not have to wait nine months to create Adam and Eve. So his policies on creation also changed. They got longer to create himself than they got to create Adam and Eve. They got longer for him to get down here to earth to a woman than it took for him to go boom, let the or boom, fire, boom, or whatever Adam and Eve looked. And how old was Adam and Eve anyway when they were green? 21, 18, she said, okay, she got her own body. You know what I'm saying? See, they need to get these blind thoughts in our heads before they come down with the garbage. Otherwise, they never would have gotten this far so long with the crap. You know what I'm saying? We would have just caught it. You know that Jesus, that God crucified Jesus for me. Did he think about asking me, did I need that approach? And what's the effect of crucifixion today? on the mind of the child. It has, it, it's not an everlasting, it doesn't have an everlasting effect because people ain't getting crucified no more. He goes there so he should arrange to crucify when crucifixion was frightening and electrocute. And electrocute. <laughs> you know, so if Jesus was living today, instead of God letting him get crucified, Jesus would go to the electric chair. And all the Christians be walking around the electric chair with somebody sitting like this. <laughs> All up inside the churches, there'd be a big electric chair sitting there. <laughs> you follow? Why don't what, you got to look at and see the game that was played and why? The game was played was fair of us as a people. Fair of the divinity that lay dormant in us, especially when we mind it. They got to get you and I versing each other. They have to get you saying, that man is crazy. You hear that stuff he says? He brainwashing you. They got to get you saying that. And they got to get Reverend Price down up there saying stuff that don't make no sense and have you sending him your money saying, See, that makes sense. It makes sense that God killed his own son. Now, that makes sense. For you. That's how much he loves you. Simply, God could have just, like I said a million times, changed anybody's mind. God didn't have to kill anybody. He didn't have to have nobody impregnated for nine months. He didn't have to give birth and suffer. You follow? And then when you get into it, like we said many times, we deal with it on a chromosome level. A woman to have a child without a man has not been proven yet in these days and times. 
mitochondrial DNA that was grafted out way long, uh, you know, uh, bred out way long ago. So now, how does she have a son without the help of a man's strength? Because there was a boy born. And that means there's an X and Y chromosome involved. And if she's a female, she got two X chromosomes. Where did the Y chromosome come from? And Gable had a Y chromosome, and Gable had chromosome cabinet. If he had a chromosome, he had DNA already, and then he was not related to the damn man. And then we're back to Joseph's problem again. They've got to get this in their head. Why? Because they don't want you to know about the real Jesus Christ. They don't want you to know about the real Heavenly Father. They don't want you to know about the real Blessed Mother, Mary. You follow? They've got to keep you worshiping in their image and after their likeness. But as long as they can keep you in that state of mind, they will rule you bodily and soul. You understand? They're not so much at ruling us physically because they've already ruled us mentally. They've already broke our manhood. They already have us chasing their image. We see ourselves through their eyes. We actually start to judge our own people by their judgment, by their measurement problem. You know what I mean? They have succeeded, in other words, in brain, making us brain dead about our glory and greatness. They make you feel bad to say you're God. <laughs> I am no God. You are a God when you compare yourself to everybody else on the planet. You're God. You are the supreme beings. Because no other race on the planet is as old as you. No other race on the planet has as much melanin as you. You are the supreme of the beings. Not, now listen now, don't get lost with what they did to your mind. When I say supreme being, instead of you thinking physical, you ought not even trained to think some spirit thing. Supreme being means a supreme being. And being, if you look it up, means existence. And existence has density. Weight occupies space. You know what I mean? So you are the supreme beings. And that would render you according to their dictionary, God. Yeah? But the only person that don't want to recognize that responsibility is you. Because you have been bred to put your trust in another man's hands. Put your life in another man's hands. And the greatest fear is you taking the reins yourself again. Standing up for what's right and fighting until you win. One success, once enough. As the mysteries of Egypt intrigued you, the secrets of the pyramids and the scientists that built them, well now you can have these secrets. Now you can enter into ancient Egyptian order and learn who and what you are. Who built the pyramids? Why? Medicine, alchemy, the secrets of symbolism revealed to you. Enter the ancient Egyptian order now, now, now. Yes. black holes and I've been studying Stephen Hawking and other physicists and basically when the sun gravity um, collapses on itself and creates what's called black hole how does they think they think they think um one want to know is in the soul of the theory of the wormhole or a vortex how is that same gravity able to collapse itself without the very same power of the sun that same very thermal nuclear energy first of all let's correct what a black hole is a black hole is a warp in space. Space and time can be bent. That's why it's called time continues. You can bend space. In other words, if I wanted to get from one galaxy to the next, for me to travel direct, what is it? Um, would that actually say that the universe is flat? No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be saying it. It wouldn't be saying that it's flat. Because if I can travel within it, mm -hmm. right, and I'm, and, I, and I'm a parent on both sides and up and down, it's impossible for it to be flat. That's an Islamic theory. In fact, the Sheikh just said that Bamba just died uh, in two weeks ago. Right? I guess he'll find out now. He's like, anyway. <laughs> 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 it's true. Right on, right on. 
<laughs> when you go from one point to the next in space, all right? Now, if I want to go from here to that house, and that was another galaxy, it was a million light years away. It would, I couldn't live long enough based on the fastest moving piece of equipment we have. And if I couldn't get an equipment to move that fast, the G-force would crush me anyway, right? But I can get from one galaxy to the next if I bend space. Go ahead. Would that mean that you're actually going to cause a quantum slide? Exactly. You're doing a quantum slide while you're actually doing a world over. And you can get there before you left. So you're like you do when you travel, like when you do right now when you travel to Las Vegas, you get there before you left. Right. So by, by the, time you do. Uh, so you're saying by what actual, so what, another thing I want to know is how is that same gravity being ripped apart to take this worm I'm trying to say, okay, that's what I'm trying to get at. First, now, I got, now you're going back to the black hole. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to explain what, how you get to a black hole. A black hole is a warp in space. That means somewhere where time has been bent, Right? When they straighten it, it can never be perfect again. And it creates a cone-shaped warp in space that sucks things in like a whirlpool. You follow? Go ahead. Okay, um, I was doing some calculations which explains how you actually keep a circle and square and how they actually will be in the six and so forth. And taking that same circle and turning the cone upside down and right. you know, up to the point. Right. You're right. actually bringing two gateways and so forth. So, and that's, that's perfect because when you create the two gateways, Right? The distance between this one here, then we're going to be traveling this way, and this one, this way, are the exact same size based on what time continues to Yeah, because um, my professors were actually, you know, um, I have been doing the test on how to actually derail quantum mechanics and so forth, how to actually create How quantum physics work? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the thing is that they've been like giving me a thousand tests and so forth. Right. And <laughs> the thing is that um, they've been, I'm calling this a program or something, and the thing is that I am coming up the calculations and I have to the calculations to actually fit what is theory because I have no equipment to actually actually yeah, won't get function. Get <laughs> I doubt it. You and the you and the white man did it. Well, I'm so. Maybe you know, that. Maybe that. I think that I'm using a system that gives me one terabyte of trillion meg. Right. And that gives me the actual simulation right. to create a simulated wormhole. Okay. And another thing is by, um, the thing is when you were talking about the actual, um, Vortex. Would that also be similar to as a wormhole or at least it just names the user? When they say vortex, is it a wormhole or is yes. a wormhole just a turn in the sky? Yes. A vortex? Yes. Two different things. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I'm okay. Not so a vortex, right? A vortex is created when different energies cross. Mm -hmm. And they're each in every available. Every form of energy that's in motion is moving at a certain speed, at a certain amount of density, because it has a thrush. Uh -huh. At a thrust from a certain direction. Uh -huh. If something's moving 50,000 miles this way, uh -huh. and some, the same size as something was moving 50 miles this way, when they come in contact with each other, one has to affect the other. <laughs> the impact of the one coming from 50,000 miles, which will increase the speed by its size, will automatically take one only moving 50 miles and cause it to wow, it would, it would, it would, it would pull it into its gravitational force. You're right, and therefore, in the center of that change, it'd be a vortex. Now, because we have layers of energy, right, that we're living in, we're calling dimensions, right, we're living in dimensions, and they're moving at different vibrational speeds at the point where one comes in contact with the other, it creates a vortex. And that means there's a porthole or a window from one dimension to the next. If you know exactly where that and for those two four energies meet, there's, a, there's an opening that, that takes you into another dimension. You know what I'm trying to say? That, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, yeah. oh, okay, so.